Welcome back to Good Day Stateline. We're so lucky to always have Tim Mahoney joining us. And this morning, we're going to dive into what's going on with Britney Spears. We are. So we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson today because yes. we're going to do this in two parts. So we need to remember, you know, that this was a girl that came up to New York from Louisiana, small town Louisiana, when she was uh, 14, got into Disney, did that for a couple of years, goes back home for two years, then comes back to New York without a parent. Yes, she had the helper lady. Yes, which they labeled, yeah, they labeled as her assistant. <laughs> yeah. So here she is, 17 in New York with an assistant, no parent, and she explodes, hits the scene, and just immediately becomes one of the biggest things going in music. And you got to remember that, you know, you don't set up your own persona in that situation. Mm -hmm. The people that you sign contracts with set up your persona in that situation. I mean, Tiger Woods didn't set up his persona. Somebody else did. Well, Britney did not set up her persona. Somebody else did. So when you saw, you know, the girl in the schoolgirl outfit and all of that stuff, yeah. that wasn't her idea. That was somebody else's idea. So then she gets just you know, dramatically attacked for all of that. And then the events happen in 2008. Yes. So in 2008, um, the wheels kind of start to come off, right? And, and everybody saw what happened with her at that time. And I mean, there was a section of the country that kind of took joy in this. I mean, there was a section sure. of the country that she became the punching bag for a lot of people. I mean, she was the, the, the going on joke. Her family was alienated from her, and then she fires her longtime manager, and in comes a person who, by all accounts, wasn't doing what was in her best interests. And so we end up with this conservatorship. So let's talk about what a conservatorship yeah. is a little bit. We call them guardianships in the state of Illinois, and we have to remember that I'm not licensed in California, and right. I don't know anything particular about this particular case. Everything that I glean, I glean from looking at the stuff that everybody well, else does. Well, at least in Illinois, it's an easier word to say. Do you know how hard it is to learn how to say conservatorship? <laughs> yes, especially when you're talking about the players, the conservator and the conservatee. Oh. <laughs> so like in Illinois, we call them guardianships. Now, is it unusual to have somebody in their 30s who's the subject of a conservatorship. Absolutely, that's mm -hmm. very unusual. Normally, if you were gonna have somebody in that situation, it would be an adult with developmental disabilities sure. or somebody who's been injured and has capable issues, okay? Capability issues. Um, but, you know, you gotta understand, number one, courts do not like to do this. They're not gonna do this without something significant going on. Um, secondly, the court has to determine, number one, that the person isn't able to take care or manage their own affairs or more likely that they're subject to being influenced and they need protection. Okay. That's one of the big issues in a conservatorship. So like when somebody has Alzheimer's, then they become subject to a guardianship or a conservatorship because it protects them for entering into contracts that aren't in their best interest. Mm -hmm. If you're the subject of a guardianship, you can't enter into a contract, only your guardian can, so it creates an additional protection. But in addition to the court determining that, there has to be a separate medical opinion that there's some sort of cognitive issue, that there's some sort of medical issue. And remember, we're never going to know what that is right. because those things are sealed and they should be, you know, you, mental health records in particular are sealed. And we do know that she's had challenges in that capacity. We do know that she's admitted that she's been uh, checked herself into institutions mm -hmm. and gotten help. So she becomes the subject of this conservatorship. We do know that she tried to hire a lawyer. That lawyer went before the court because he's testif or he's uh, given interviews to this effect. And the judge, after doing what was called an in-camera review, which just means that the judge looks at it and nobody else does, does an in-camera review of the mental health evaluation determine she was not capable of even hiring her own attorney. This was recent? That was in 2008. Oh, okay. So that was in 2008. So clearly, there was a lot going on. Yeah. And so then she becomes the subject of this conservatorship. And as a fan, all we knew was her dad's in charge of her money. Right. Like that was like the bottom line information. Right. And again, there's a whole bunch that we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And so uh, dad came in and petitioned for conservatorship. There's nothing to indicate that mom resisted that. And dad is an unlikely candidate in this case. Mm -hmm. He was you know, somewhat alienated from her. Um, she was much closer to her mom growing up. And, and dad had a series of issues. There's alcoholism issues. He had you know, jobs. There was lots of different things. Yeah. So, so why does dad end up being the conservator? Well, a couple of things. Number one, he wasn't the sole conservator. The court appointed him and appointed another attorney to be joint conservators. So it took both of them in order to make a decision. Okay. 
Number two, it might have been that dad was the only person in the courtroom raising their hand, sure. saying that I'll do this. I mean, we don't have any evidence that anybody else was there trying to petition for conservatorship. We also don't have anything to indicate that mom was resisting that. Third is you got to put up a bond. When you become a conservator for somebody else, you have to be able to put up a bond equivalent to their estate or more. Well, Brittany had a significant estate at this point. It's easier for a family member to get a sure. bond. So it could have been that the court tried to find somebody else to be a conservator at that point, and everybody said, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to be responsible for that person's money if they're having this many problems. And so the court was left with this decision going, okay, I'm going to appoint dad. I'm going to also appoint this other attorney who's willing to take it, able to bond, and they have to be co-conservators. And also remember that Brittany did have her own attorney through this whole thing. And as near as we can tell, in 2008, she agreed to the conservatorship. Now, that might have been because she was alienated from her kids and it allowed her to get yeah, visitation. Was... You know, that's one of the speculations. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But it does appear in 2008 that there was an acquiescence of, yes, this needs to happen. So now it's 2021, and there's a reason why Tim Mahoney has to come back and talk about this, because it is so much to take in, including like the newest uh, pieces of the puzzle. So what we want you to do is to send us your questions about this, because Tim, you're going to join us next month, and we're going to talk even more about what's going on and then what's actually going on right now. Correct. We're going to unpack the rest of this as much as we can know. Again, <sighs> there's a lot that we don't know, but as much as we can unpack, yeah. we're going to. So bring your coffee on that day. We'll let you know when it's <laughs> happening on the Good Day State Line Facebook page. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. When we get back, Michelle from the Landscape Connection is showing me how to shop a recipe for the perfect potted plants, and we're naming our fan of the week. But first, it's birthday time. A happy belated birthday to David from Forreston. He celebrated uh, last Sunday. Also, happy birthday to Rebecca. She's celebrating today. And uh, Carmelina, whose birthday is on Friday. Friday, and two little but big birthdays that I'm celebrating this week. My niece Ava turns 10 tomorrow, May 3rd, and then my littlest nephew, Madden, is turning 4 on May 8th. Send us your friends and family birthday shout-outs anytime at GoodDayStateLine at WTBO.com. We'll be right back.